official, we are in a recession. That's right. So now that we know the obvious, the question is, how long will it last? Here to tell us, down to the day, hour, and minute, <laughs> is the watchdog on Wall Street, Mr. Chris Markowski. No pressure, Chris. <laughs> Help us out. I tell you, no, I tell you what you invest in. I know what you're going to do. Andy and Mitch, you guys are going to take your comedy to a public because that was one of the best times oh, I've had oh, in, in oh, a long, long time. And I used to live right around the corner from the comedy strip in New York. So we used to go all the time. All these big acts. You guys blew them away. Oh, blew them away. Everybody you. that I took absolutely loved it. You guys were awesome. And thank Andy didn't even much. know you were there. And okay, he, was, he, was close to, he, was, he was close to the first row there, and I didn't see it, and I had all these lines. I was ready to rip on you, you know, about how you told me to invest in Lehman Brothers just a few months ago, <laughs> which is not true. Uh, all right, so, so, you know, we hear a lot about this recession talk and, uh, and, and, and these comparisons. Uh, to the Great Depression mm -hmm. and everything, uh, are, are those valid? Those kind of uh, those kind of predictions. Well, I, yeah, well, let's use your example for your comedy tour. Packed to the rafters. I mean, are we in a depression where people going to comedy tours packing it up? We got the big football games coming this weekend. Full. The economy is weakened. There's no doubt about that. But it's definitely not even close. The idea that we're in a, a depression is just it's nonsensical. It makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, what basically drove us into a Great Depression was the fact that we stopped doing trade around the globe. What they did was they put up a tariff act, which basically stopped everybody from doing business. Right. We're not nearly in that ball of wax. We're not even close to it. It's over 25% unemployment during the Great Depression. Right. Not seeing it in. Yeah, 25%. You know, the, the, the GDP contracted 28%. Uh, the stock market, I believe, lost 95% yeah. of its value. You know, granted, we've seen a huge, uh, you know, crash, certainly, but nothing like back in the 30s. Recessions are healthy. Recessions are necessary. People are going to get this, they, they fear this recession monster. Why? It's a necessity. It's part of our economy because you know what? It gets rid of all the junk, all the garbage that we've built up. It's almost like a hangover. You drink too much, you're going to have too much <laughs> of problems. So we, we did some really dumb things for a while, too much credit, uh, house prices uh, going up way too high. So we're dealing with the hangover stage. But when do you think that people are going to see things turn around? Because we're already a year into it. A lot of people mm -hmm. feeling negative, a lot of people feeling the impact. So yeah. when are things going to, you know, that turn was, around? Actually, that was the most positive news that I heard. The, you know how they decide? They have like this, these high priests in Cambridge they called the NBER, and they decide whether or not we're in a recession. And they came out and said, okay, we're 12 months into this thing. That's good because they usually, the long ones, have been 16 months post-World uh, War II. So basically, we're, we're a long way through it. Um, right now, you know, what I try to advise people to do, if you're a small business owner, uh, you know, you're trying to start a business, working company, if we're in a recession, try not to participate. Do what really successful companies have done in prior recessions or depressions. An example is Procter & Gamble. During the Great Depression, they were not the, before that, they were not the biggest company out there. Okay. Rather, rather than go and cut back, what they did was they expanded their marketing and then they became the standard bearer. Opportunities exist in recessions as well. So there yeah. is hope. There yeah, you go. Absolutely. Good advice right there. Welcome back. Well, now that we're officially in a recession, a lot of people are still looking to the housing market for signs of when it might end. That's right. And there were a few good signs on that front last week, but were they good enough? Well, let's ask the watchdog on Wall Street, Mr. Chris Markowski. How are you doing, Chris? Great. Alrighty, so uh, we, we had some good news a little bit. Uh, mortgage applications doubled last week. Yes. Why was that? Well, actually, the Fed came out last week and they made some adjustments to their, their bailout program and they uh, decided they're going to start getting into the more the commercial markets credit cards, student loans, various different things, markets that were frozen up, and right. that also helped uh, the mortgage market. And we saw a really, you know, rapid rise in applications for mortgages. A lot of them happen to be refinances. But late yesterday, uh, the FDIC actually just coming out with a plan, and the details are not all there yet, where they're going to actually be stepping in and issuing a new type of a debt where we could see 30-year mortgage rates down at 4.5% very, very soon. 4.5%. That's, uh, that's going to save people a lot of money. I don't know what the details are. I don't know if it's going to allow people to actually go ahead and refinance or whether right. or not it's going to be only for people who are first-time home buyers. Oh, I, I hope it's refinance. Uh, me too. I say it's just great. <laughs> I mean, but there's a flip side to everything. We've seen prices come down. That's also good because people need to go out and get a new home. They can get one at a better price. It's going to give them more disposable income to go out and do other things. And if these rates come down, once again, that's another stimulus to the economy. You couple that with oil, we can, wheels may start turning soon. Okay, so you think there's hope that the housing market's going to rebound soon or at least 
maybe you know the homes won't. Well, I, I happen to I'm, I'm not, value. I happen to live. You know, well, I'm kind of about an hour and a half, two hours away from from here. It was one of the the most rapid rises in real estate markets in the country in Southwest Florida. Yeah. And houses are now starting to move a little bit. They're starting to sell because it came down very very hard as well. Right. But that's a good sign. Yeah. You know, see, I, I always say to people too when they talk about the housing market, uh, obviously the downside, and I've been on the upside and the downside mm -hmm. of this. I was selling a house at the same time I was buying one. Uh, selling was horrible, right? yeah. and I had to take a big loss. On the other hand, I got one really cheap when yeah, I bought. You got a great deal. And it's and the, and you, as you were saying in the first segment, one of the things we have to keep in mind with these recessions is it's a lot of correction going on. Yeah. A lot of a lot of things that were way overpriced and now they need to come back down. And recessions happen about once every ten years. It's pretty predictable, isn't it? it, yeah, it that's true. But the other thing is too, and he's got to understand too, is if you people consider their house rather than an investment a bill, kind of like the electric bill or your car bill, they'd be so much better off saying, you know what, it doesn't matter. I, it's a necessity of life. I need shelter. I need food. I need water. Right. Consider it that. And say, you know what? I can afford a thousand dollars a month. I can afford two thousand okay. dollars a month. It doesn't matter what your house is worth if you think of it in that manner. Hey, welcome back to the Daily Buzz. It's a quarter to the hour. Yes, and all morning long we've been talking all things financial with our money guy, Chris Barkowski. And the watchdog on Wall Street is back to answer your questions and make a little more dollars and cents. How you doing there, Chris? Great. So you said uh, we, we, we were lighting up uh, the chat room today and also our inbox. And what are folks, what's on their mind? You know, the chat room was rocking today because Holly wasn't there, so they were actually concentrating on me. Usually when Holly's in there, forget <laughs> right. it. It's all just about how hot Holly is. That's the whole thing. It's all Holly That's all the time. All. So. No, I'm glad they, because you, you said... It, it's lighting up this morning and talking about education and then the housing market. So All what were they the asking you? Uh, actually asking about whether or not, doing a lot, actually a lot of calculations in regards to should I refinance, should I not refinance, what is your, you know, I'm basically discourse in regards to what your rate is and whether or not you should go about doing it. But it was really uh, a bit of an eclectic conversation in regards to getting off on education and, and government spending. So we had a we had a bright bunch in there today. What, what is your advice as far as refinancing? I mean, because that's something I think a lot of people grapple with because sometimes they don't know if we're going to get hit with fees and that kind sure. of stuff and whether it's going to be worth it in the long run in terms of what the percentage discount is. You have to shop. You have to shop around. I mean, there's there's going to be different rates all over the place. And there's a lot of great tools uh, to go about doing that. There's, you can go online, various different lending sources. But obviously, you want to factor in how much you're going to be paying out because sometimes you get these 30-year fixed rates, you're going to pay a lot in closing costs. It also depends also on where you live in the country. Some okay. some states, the closing costs are astronomical. You basically have to run the numbers and see whether or not it's going to be worthwhile for you. And do you think a lot of times people get in trouble because they don't do their research? Yeah, all the time. I mean, all the time. I mean, I was speaking to a couple of people today in the chat and I couldn't believe the rates that they were paying and they're asking me whether or not they should refinance. I'm like, please, yes, go do it. You're going to save yourself a fortune. Yeah. And all this money, that's, that's extra money for you to go out and go on vacation, pay out on other credit card debts and get yourself to get your financial house in order. Yeah, if you're paying seven or eight percent uh, and, and you're going down down to like five or four point five as you were saying, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what the closing costs are, do it. Well, we actually we had one person that was in double digits. Oh wow. my god. So I was like, yes, yes, right away now. No matter what, no matter what. <laughs> oh, Drop everything, do it this morning. And uh, real quick too, uh, we're seeing uh, the numbers now in the recession that we've already been in for about twelve months. Uh, what do you think? Is it gonna be about half the year, summer or so that we see ourselves really climbing out of this? Yeah, if if I can answer exactly when we're going to hit exact bottom, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> You'd be a billionaire. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, you're never going to guess where the exact bottom is. You're never going to exact where the best uh, top is. What you got to try to do is you got to try to play it on the in-between. The key is, in a recession, don't participate. You're a small business owner out there. Take advantage. Stay aggressive. Crisis situations always bring up fantastic opportunities to gain market share.